So to, to democratize jobs and to increase the access, I'm really excited about it because the spirit of technology I always feel is to improve lives, not to concentrate wealth or do things like this and, and or to do things like that. So I'm really excited the way it can democratize and, and, and spread things out like that because in, in the big cities, um, if you're not right at the top, it's, it can be really difficult. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, not only do I have freelancers in the marketplace that live all over the world, I have some people that don't technically live anywhere. They're they're just nonstop traveling. They're digital nomads, so to speak. A, a buddy of mine just made plans for the next year to, to go live in a van, essentially, and work out of his van and just travel across the U.S. It's incredible. It really opens the door for whatever type of lifestyle you want, whether you want to live in the suburbs, whether you want to travel, whether you want to just move every year or every two years. Um, the opportunities are there and you don't need to be in one place as long as you know what you're doing as long as you can communicate effectively and and keep clients informed and up to date and complete things um, when you say you're going to and really keep your word the possibilities are endless the challenge has been and of course everything in life has has pros and cons and the challenge particularly in sydney australia um, surprisingly is time zones um We've got some people in Eastern Europe and in Brazil, as I mentioned, and to get two time zones to cross over, super easy, right? To get three time zones to cross over, someone is going to be <laughs> either waking up early or staying up late. Um, but with a little bit of flexi flexibility, everything's possible. But that's, that's, that's just a little bit of the friction um, around that side of things. But I guess... Um, in the U.S., because it's such a big market, for U.S. companies, if they're only hiring remote in the U.S., it's not really a big deal, right? Yeah, so this is what's cool, and this is part of why I put this in free up. So when you're a client of free up and it's free, and anytime you need a worker, you put in a request, right? And inside the request, you can put the, your time zone or the available hours that you want the worker to be. And if you need someone that can only that can be on every Saturday morning, we're only introducing you to someone that can be on every Saturday morning. So you don't even have to vet through the other people. You don't have to talk to them. You don't have to negotiate ahead of time. We're only introducing you to people that will work in the time zone you want. And and some clients don't care. I mean, I have a graphic designer and a web developer, and as long as they can meet with me here and there, I don't care when they work, as long as they hit their deadlines. For other things like my assistant that monitors my emails every morning um, or covers my Skype 24-7, I do care about the schedule. And um, I only work with people that are happy to do it. The last thing I want to do is, is force someone to work in a time zone that they're not comfortable with. It only leads to issues down the line. So I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, we have clients all over the world. It's it's probably one of the top questions I get asked every day is, can you get me a worker that works in my time zone? And the answer is yes. And there are plenty of people out there that are used to it, that want to do it, that understand that they can run their freelance business better by working in XYZ time zones. Explain to me what your vetting process is. Is it a general vetting process? Is it a detailed vetting process? Um, how many people do you, what percentage do you actually turn away? Sure. So we actually turn away 99% of applicants. We're, we only let the top 1% in. Wow. And wow. the way we vet them is it's on skill, it's on attitude, and it's on communication. And we have one or multiple rounds of Skype interviews. So we're talking to them, not in person, but face to face um, or through chat. And then uh, we also have a best practices guide on communication because we know how important that is. And then we have a test on the best practices of the marketplace and on the terms of use of the marketplace to make sure our clients are taken care of and have a good experience. Now, when we're talking about skill, there's a time and a place for a five out of 10 worker and there's a time and a place for a 10 out of 10 worker, no matter what the skill set is. What's important to us is that they're honest about what they can and cannot do. And this is a part of the interview process that's unique. If we're interviewing someone for Facebook ads or we're interviewing someone for a graphic designer, we're obviously going to look at different things, ask different questions. Um, go, we still go after their references and their background and what company, but it's a, that part of the interview process is different. The part that's the same is the attitude and the communication. What are some tips if someone out there is thinking of building a business that's a two-sided marketplace to actually growing um, the, the platform? 
it's all about treating people well, building relationships. I mean, I, I don't say that I'm going to do something unless I'm going to do it, unless I'm going to hold my word. And a lot of times where businesses falter, whether you're a marketplace or not, it's because people don't trust the owner. Who wants to be on Airbnb if they don't think they're going to get paid? Same thing with free up, same thing with Uber. Um, it, it's all about building that trust and reliability. And sometimes you do take a loss just to make sure everyone's happy and you keep moving forward.